to go here. So if people oh. want to know whether they'll be there at 10 or, mm. or not, or I'm. If you want to, let me know. Let me know. What can we learn if we? I guess we need to find out who's going to be here tomorrow. Yes, under. Yes, plans, but it's a question of what time. If my quandary is on it. <laughs> uh, do you happen to have three inch cheek ones? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, well, what is cool? What lucky. What luck. Well, pretty much sequence. One what was luck. Uh, yeah. Okay, one. take a moment out, take a look. <clears throat> hmm. Did everybody get a copy? Uh-uh. Is there more? Yes. Oh, we'll start with 28. There's two pages. Probably not. Two pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few minutes out. <clears throat> Please read it aloud. Okay. There are many people in different experiences. There was many things in each experience. If one was in one experience and another in another, the other in the other could not see the experience the other was in. It was like whatever they were experienced was the one, wait, sorry, was the only thing that could be experienced like they could only see the experience they were in, like there were no other experiences. It was like they had to drop what they were experiencing to see the other experiences, to drop whatever they were seeing as the one and only experience. What was it like in the dream when you realized? Read it. It was like whatever they were experiencing. Mm -hmm. Could you read it aloud? Okay. It was like whatever they were experiencing was the only thing that could be experienced. What that did one? that do to you to see that? Um. What was it like it, it seeing that? It puzzled me. It um, perplexed me. It, um, Pardon me? It puzzled and perplexed me. It, um, it uh, again, here comes the wonder. It made me wonder why they couldn't see the other experiences or the other, who are, the other experience other people were experiencing. Good, okay. And then, um, did you do the last line? The last one, uh, la, 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 la. to drop whatever they were seeing. Mm -hmm. to they had to drop. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They had to drop whatever they were seeing as the one and only experience. In order to. In order to see the other. Experiences. What was that like coming to that? It's like if they could see through whatever they were experiencing, they could. See see the other's experience. What was it like seeing that? Um, to me it seemed uh, like natural, normal, um, easy to see. Um, what else could I say? Um, What kind of shit is that? Um, um, have we been in it before? Yes. Well, well, well um, boring. No. Oh, well, help me out. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. It's oh. beautiful. It's uh, uh, full. Beautiful. What yeah. else? 
full of life, full of energy, um, powerful. Um, it's um, like everything opens up. And um, like you're you, like you're seeing things for the first time with clarity and with um, some kind of knowledge. I don't know what kind of knowledge, but it's a certain kind of knowledge. Um, what do you find about that stage? Come on. Mm. Last time uh, I had my dream, you were asking me when I was in this state before, and I was having a hard time remembering it when I was a child, but I remembered I had it as a child. And I was racking my brain and racking my brain of trying to remember when I first experienced it because I have a really bad childhood amnesia. Mm -hmm. And then I finally remembered. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if there are three scenes or one or two scenes. But mm -hmm. what I remembered was my parents took us to the Grand Canyon. And I saw the Grand Canyon as a child for the first time. And I saw the depth of it and the magnificence of it and... How old were you? Oh, probably like five, five. six. Go ahead. And um, in the beauty of it, and I felt small, but yet I felt like one. Um, and then I, double, I got a double hit. I don't know if this is the same trip or a different trip. But um, I remember when nighttime came, and I looked up at the stars, and I could, I felt like I could touch them. Mm -hmm. because same, same age? I think so. I huh? think I was the same age, yes. Yeah. And then again, I had that, that feeling again of, of feeling small, but yet one with everything. Right. And then, um, so I had another experience when I was, I, I don't know if it was the same time, around the same time, but uh, I had a learning disability when I was very young, and I could not read or write. Mm -hmm. And my mom took me to this special doctor, and the doctor put up a mirror, and then they put the book against the mirror, and then I could see for the first time words and letters and numbers mm -hmm. and that opened me up again to beauty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these are all opening up experiences mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep. and it was all around the same age yeah yeah it overcame your uh, original or did it? Oh work? yeah, my perplexity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, see, so it's one, two, right? So, one, you're over here, perplexed and wondering why, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And all of this is now when you're looking at the interconnectability, right? These, the capability of breaking through. Mm -hmm. Right, so it uh, has yes. a nice double level, doesn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by chance, did you have another dream? Yes. By heavens. <laughs> okay, let's try it. I was in a clinical setting. A doctor is asking me questions about Brianna. He asked if I have ever checked her brain. I say, no, she's a completely normal child. Then he draws my attention to the wall where there's a square box that looks like it can be light up, lit up. And what looks like an x-ray on it. Or 
something in it, like maybe a computer screen that, ha that he needs to wake up to see what was in it more vividly. So he goes over to it and does something so I can see the image more clearly. I see a brain scan. The brain doesn't look complete. And I s can see the neurons are firing and trying to get around the anomaly. anomaly sorry. While I am seeing this, the doctor is, um, um, that's the wrong word, um, confirming what I am seeing. Then he says, this is inherited from a parent. I mainly think of my brain and all the problems I had as a child learning, understanding and how I felt so different than the other children and how I see myself in my children or my child and how they suffer in similar ways. What do you find curious about the dream? Um, I, ha my, I had a question before I went to bed with this one. My, uh, my mom was asking me about my nurture, because uh, my education, we're pretty much trying to take care of that with philosophy. So she's asking me about my nurture. And I was trying to get that right in my brain, what that meant, and then I had this dream. So I, have, I think it has something to do with my nurture, even though it's about my daughter. What was it like when the doctor finally was able to make visible the screen? Oh, um, that was beautiful. That moment when what, I... What? It was beautiful. That was beautiful, right? Come on. That moment when I was looking at the brain scan and what the brain was doing, how it was getting around the anomaly, um, it was like I couldn't believe that the brain was so powerful that it was able to get around whatever this um, anomaly was, anomaly. And um, it was, I couldn't, it was like, wow, wow. Because you saw, come on. Because I saw that, um, that sh the brain was doing it all by itself. Um, that it was healing itself that um, whatever was lacking, the brain was trying to get around it and finding ways around the problem. Now over here, I have someone else. <laughs> yeah, that guy didn't like him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that guy. Yeah. Go ahead. What was it like for him to take you, show this to you and the judgments he made? Uh, um... To me, it seemed like um, I didn't. I had like this distrust towards him. Like, um, why is he showing me this? What does it mean? Um, what does he? What is he? His intentions? What's his intentions? Look. When, pick it up from, while I am seeing this, the doctor is comforting what I uh, am yeah, seeing. Yeah, that's supposed to be confirming. Then I'm he sorry. says, this is inherited. Yeah. So what is his view of what's going on? That this, um, hmm? this not, uh, whatever she's got, uh, or whatever her, whatever it's going on with her brain is an inherited thing. Is what? Inherited. Uh, yeah, but so what? What's yeah, it, like, exactly. Uh, therefore, you should 
therefore, therefore, what does he think or what? Yeah, like. Um, Tell me more. Like, oh, is it a good or bad or in between? Oh, I forgot to write something down that he oh, said ahead. that there was only a 13% chance of recovery. That's his judgment. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what does he think it is? Something that she needs to recover from, huh? or something that she needs help with. Like. Um, Therefore, he thinks it's a, uh, a problem, problem or not. Problem. Yeah. 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 Look. One. Two. Three. Your reflections on it, the last part of the dream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I immediately think of my brain and all the problems I had as a child learning, understanding, and how I felt so different than the other children, and how I see myself in my children or my child, and how they suffer in similar ways. Hmm. But do they really? Come on. What does that mean, what you just read? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm, I'm questioning my own thing in this. Um, is it really a problem? Now, forget that judgment <laughs> for a moment. Right. Just tell me, what is it like when you were making that statement in the dream. That, um, my children have difficulties also in learning. What, what, what? My children have difficulties also in learning and um, school. And um, they also have to have to go to special classes because uh, they have problems like I did when I was younger. That didn't answer <laughs> my question. Hmm. Are you making some kind of a comparative judgment? Between myself and my children? Louder? Yeah, I am. And what kind? Hmm. Hmm. That we suffer in similar ways. Pardon me? We suffer in similar ways. That's right. Therefore, are you making a comparison between what and what? Or who and what? <coughs> Others and us. Pardon me? Others and us. Therefore, you make a connection between... <coughs> me and them. You and Bernardo. <coughs> Is that right? Yeah. If that's true... Now we have to look back and see what the dream is saying. Are you agreeing or disagreeing with disagreeing him? Disagreeing with him. Oh, a little bit? A lot. Hmm. How's your sin? Yeah. It's good and then it goes down. <laughs> when I start reflecting on, on my own uh, problems. And learning, and then trying to put that into my children. What, what, what? So the, with my own problems and, and putting that on my children. Like, maybe, like, do but they really have a problem? Yeah, how, uh, are you half right. dead? Huh? Yeah, 50 50 chance of living. How, how did mm -hmm. you live? By heavens, you did. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of his diagnosis? If you're alive. Oh. Hey. Yeah, I didn't like his diagnosis. No, no, like is not the I question. Was, I was not happy with it. What? I, it was, I was not happy with his diagnosis. What is missing is your... Telling him? It's right. Yeah, I didn't say nothing. Why not? See, that's the issue, right? Mm. 
you could have told them this yes. and all this. Yes, I could have said all that to him. Yes. Right? Yes, I could have. Mm. But mm. I kept it to myself. By it's the my way, own internal dialogue. By the way, did you tell them what you found out? That no. They, no. Oh, oh, is that similar or different? Similar. Oh, well, let's see what happens with the third one. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh my goodness. I was wondering in my dream, how do we know any of this is real? What if we die then realize that what we just experienced was all a scavenger hunt for things that can't be explained, like love, beauty, good, one and self. Then when we wake up to this, there we are without logos to explain it. But we must report what we found. Where then we realize we have no logos to explain these higher ideals. All we can say is that is what they are not. Hmm. So am I seeing anything there either? Interesting. Yeah, what do you make of it? Okay. What do I make of it? Like I was trying to think of to myself, what could I say? What could I explain? What could I use? What, um, what logos could I have to explain these things? And it's like, um, with love, it's like, um, in beauty and the good and the one and the self, it's like, um, some you can experience, like love and beauty, possibly, but, um, the good, the one, and the self, um, you can probably only explain the rays of them or what comes from them. Or what Parmenides so, says about them. So, would you read the, uh, the last phrase? All we can say. Uh, All we can say is what they are not. All we can say is what they are not. Go ahead. Um, because the magnitude of these things are so profound. Um, what was it like when in the dream when this came in the dream? Um. I Only. felt mute. I felt mute. What? I felt mute. Useless? Mute. Used? Mute. Mute. Mused? <laughs> amused? No, not what? amused. Come on. Amused um, as a seer? Come on. What was it in the dream? What did it do to you in the dream when you got that message? Like these things are beyond words. Um, there was that in the dream. Yeah, I want to say yes. More. What did it do to you? Come on, to see mm, that in the dream. I felt. Um, Like, um, it's 
ask a question. I feel like this overwhelming um, wanting or um, sense of um, of just like um, like um like a falling away like a um, keep going um that's how yeah like almost like when i was a kid um say it again like when i was talking about the grand canyon and the um, the, the the stars um it's like when i was experiencing that and seeing that um it was like a falling away of uh of my own identity um who i what was, was that like? as a person um um like um like almost like going into like an emptiness um, or um yet you could also say it was like the experience you had of the grand canyon mhm mm right and or in the stars yes hmm? Yes, because I, I, I felt that there too, yes. Yeah. I felt that there and when I was looking at the stars when I was a child. Like, um, like, a, like, like, um, how, like, how could I explain this, what I'm experiencing to people? Um, it, uh, the magnitude of it was so profound and so deep and so um, so uh, vast that uh, there's just like what, what? You're, you don't have words. Don't have the... You don't have words to describe it. Don't have the words it. to do it. Yeah. You don't have the words to describe it. Yeah, that's how I felt. There is a struggle in this dream we have not represented. Mm. Which one? This well, last one? <laughs> or all of them? <laughs> take the first sentence. What is it like in the first sentence? Of the first dream or the last dream? Oh, I was wondering. How can we know? Come on, read it. Oh. How can we know any of this is real? Yeah, exactly. What was that like? Come on, in the dream. It's like um like when you're when you're in a dream, sometimes you think that your dream is real. Um you can have such a vivid beautiful um dream that you can even say maybe that was real. Like it's so vivid and it's mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there that when you wake up from that, you're like, wait a minute, was I just dreaming? <laughs> or was, is this the dream? Because it was just so I'll try real. that in with that sentence. Okay, read it again. How? How do we know any of this is real? What was that like in the dream? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like um 
like an awakening of a sort in a dream. Um, God, how do you explain that? Um, Go ahead. It's like waking up to a new reality. Um, or, Do you um, have a view that follows this question about scavengers, etc.? Yeah. Again, what was it like during this episode in the dream? How do you know any of this is real? Hmm. It's like, what makes it real? Um, does the experience make it real? Does the love, beauty, the good, and the one in the self make it real? Um, how do you know the difference between dreams and reality? Um, uh, Melinda, a lot of that. <laughs> you're in the state now. What state are you in now? Puzzling this out. What, did, what state is it? Right now. <laughs> it's like um, I want to let go and go somewhere. I want to let go of this, whatever this is. Huh? Um, Whatever this reality, I think, is. Um, um, <laughs> oh, wow, well, I explain it. Um, like, um, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, at just at this point, we're looking for the effect, this reference to being like scavengers, what effect that had on you. Hmm, it's a good question. It's like, um, Like, I'm trying to, um, understand why we're here, um, and the magnitude and the beauty of, um, of these things, um, like if you can't even explain them, then it's just, it's like I feel that thing again where I'm falling I'm down. And, um, or falling somewhere. Falling away from um, whatever's holding me here. You call this a failure of. Hmm? A you failure. call this a failure. No. The lack of. Logos. Logos, right? Yes or no? Mm, yes, the lack of logos. Pardon me? I don't know if I want to call it failure, but you can lack change of it. But uh, lack of logos. Yes, lack of logos. 
Because right? I'm even trying to explain it now, Mark, I'm having difficulty. <laughs> we're without logos to explain it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we are without logos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm there right now, trying to explain it. But we must report what we found. <laughs> right? Yeah. State. Do you, in the dream, report what you found? Take a look. All I can say was that what it's not. Yeah. When we realize, right? Where then we realize we have no logos to explain these higher ideals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or maybe this is me. So, what are you going to do with the re with the report? It's going to be <laughs> without logos. Without the logos. <coughs> So there's a there's a problem here we haven't touched yet. Mm -hmm. And it can go several ways, so I'm not gonna offer anything. <laughs> All right? But I'd rather return to what is it like when you say all we can say is what they are not. Um, that uh, takes me back to the um, Parmenides hypotheses um, of the first. <coughs> what about this Parmenides stuff? Takes me back to that. Like that's what we could report. What um, does that mean? That whatever he says in that first yeah, hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, what does it mean? Right? Yeah, it's Only what they are, like that. that is following the model of Parmenides, is that mm -hmm. right? Something like that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> what is that like at that moment? Um... It made me want to um, get more familiar with the work so I could okay. do that. <laughs> and the At dream? Least. And the dream? Um, then you're, you're saying, hey, I want to get more in touch with this stuff. Is that right? Hmm. Yes. Now or in the dream or both? I think it's both. I think it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's, it's with me. It doesn't go away. I keep having the same freaking Look, dreams. So, um, so is the Logos in the uh, first hypothesis? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? We can explain it. Mm -hmm. Does she agree with you? Who? Huh? Oh. Say it again. Oh. Parmenides? Does Parmenides agree with me? Is that the conclusion Parmenides? comes to? He's using Logos to explain it. So, one would assume no. Come on, two questions. First, right? <coughs> These things are beyond words. Does that follow Parmenides' 
exploration of the first hypothesis. I think I need to get more into the Parmenides. What? I think I need to get into the Parmenides to yes, you say might. But, yes so, or no. But is, is the idea of the Logos in the yes. first hypothesis? Yes. Therefore, what does that do to this? Mm, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't right. go along with Are you it. right or wrong? Wrong. Hmm? Wrong. You don't realize you're right. I'm right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. But I'm That's right. the problem in the dream. I'm right? Yeah. Say, by the way, uh, could he come to this conclusion following the Logos, yes or no? Could Parmenides come yes. to that conclusion? That's a good question. Does he have a systematic way? Yes, he does. Is there a Logos in the first hypothesis? Yes. Is the word even there? Yes. Yes. Do you agree with Parmenides then? I do not agree with him. Huh? I, it looks like from my dream I don't agree. Uh, does this also look like you agree? Does this conclusion follow? <coughs> yeah. I want to say yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I need to get into this. I was curious. Yeah, so it's I'm like I have. Say that. You're good. I, it's like like this. These keep things keep coming up in my dreams, and I like. Parmenides keeps coming up in my dreams and keeps coming up in my dreams and keeps coming up in my dreams. Mm. I need to get into it to understand my own self, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. How interesting. Hmm. A lot to think about. Okay. I said two questions, right? Mm -hmm. Gave you the first. Second, would you take a look at the first question? Go ahead. How do we know any of this is real? Hmm? How do we know any of this is real? That one? Thank you. Uh, say, in what hypothesis is the question of reality or real? I want to say the second. Hmm? I want to say the second. But I'm not sure. I want to say the second, but I'm well, not sure. Well, I don't mind. I'm not <laughs> against sure. you. I'm not sure. My gut is telling me the second, but I'm not sure. In this dream, there's a play between the second and the first hypothesis. <laughs> but throughout both... I always fight with those two. The Logos is present. Mm-hmm. This was wondering, like, how can I make the leap from the second to the first without falling in the gap? Or maybe I want to fall in the gap. Hey, what's in the gap? Self. Huh? Self. Yeah. <laughs> and then how am I, how am I, um, in, where do I fit in with the first? Well, see, it comes down to this. How does how this do state of mind, it? how does this state of mind fit into the dream? <laughs> that's the gap. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's the gap, yeah. Because there's a way of reading this as a failure. On the other hand, right, hey, what's real? I don't know anything that's real. That's like on a scavenger hunt. It's all absurd. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it feels that way. There's no logos. 
failure, 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 failure. But as we examine it, isn't it curious what happens? First of all, we got this stage, right? Powerful, positive or negative? Positive. That one's very positive. I've been there, so I know. And that was coincidental with this idea. When you see these things are beyond words. Yes, because when I'm in this state, it's like that. It's so like, what hypothesis would that be in, since you mentioned the Parmenides? The first. I want to say the first. But I don't know. I'm not but sure. Hmm? I want to say the first, but... I don't mind, unless Barbara <laughs> objects. I don't object. First and second hypotheses against yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> against yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I want to make. I want to. I want to make the leap. Mm. And you also said in the dream there's this. So I want to get in touch with Logos. Mm-hmm. Are they similar? Both no, this, this one seems like I'm still holding on to this something, which is the Logos, and this one I seem to be just like, yeah. Well, you have more than one level here. As you said, first and second hypothesis. I'm stuck. Hmm. Yeah, it's like I'm trying to figure out a way around my roadblock. I have a tendency of wanting to do that a lot. I'm trying to figure out a way around my roadblocks. Um. I would like to see a way to, come on, say it again. Get around that roadblock that I have what in my mind. What roadblock? Like, I'm, I feel like I'm still holding on to something. See, the roadblock is you're holding a question, right? You're holding a question. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm hmm That's negative. Internally, it's positive. Positive, positive, positive. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. When I when I'm without logos, that's where it turns negative. When I um, because I feel like that's like something about that's negative. Like when I don't have words to explain these things, I think it's, it's like a but negative thing. If these things are beyond words, how can you ever explain them? And the logos brought you to that. Mm -hmm. You still want the logos to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Internally, there's a conflict, isn't there? Yes. 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 Hmm. Interesting. So, um, I like it. Now tell me. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, make the report. Go ahead. What am I reporting? I'll make the report. Go ahead. Oh my goodness. Finish the dream. Come on, make the report. We must report what we found. Well, what have you found? I found when I was a very young child that I, I, a falling away of my identity and um, into oneness of um, a profound uh, state of mind that is beyond words. 
Mm -hmm. Different than these. But you're not telling in either of these. Therefore, what kind of a report? Put it in words. Come on. Same thing here. What? Why not put it in words? Why not put it in words? Well, go ahead, put it in words. Which one? You've been asked to write. You must report what we found. Well, what did you find? Oh, I thought I just said it. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. All of this, huh? How do I put it all together? Okay, that's enough. Say, tell me. Uh, hey, Melinda, mm -hmm. say, if you could answer it, what would that mean? I'm explaining it with Louder? Logos. I'm explaining it with Logos. That's right. <laughs> Catch 22, Belinda. <laughs> yeah. Now, what does that do to the whole dream? My dream master is funny. Um, obviously, um, I still have an unsurety about myself. Yep. Um, Right from the beginning. And right? yeah, how do I know this is real? The, there is he, right? Yeah. I, and I'm trying to um, <coughs> get past it. Get, like, yeah, like um, unsurety of what I'm seeing, how I'm seeing. What, how I'm understanding. Um, yeah, still there. Still lingers. Mm. If I could just fall, let, let it fall away. I like it. Louder? I like it. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. Good. We're meeting tomorrow. That's just as well with me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Jeffrey, let's take a break for a few minutes. see up on the hill a gorgeous um, building that's 100 years old and mm -hmm. it's in the sunlight and it's gleaming and it's quite beautiful mm -hmm. reflecting off at, on the crest of the hill. When you're ready, read it. Uh, so I am lying in the back of a Subaru station wagon. <clears throat> My friends are up front, and we're driving out in the country with open fields visible for miles. All of a sudden, a tornado is right upon us, right on the back bumper. I can't understand why it was not reported on radio, or why no one in the car saw it coming from a long way away, since we have such a good view all around us. But now it's upon us, and I can see the black funnel right on the back bumper where I am. And actually, the hatch is open, so I can see the funnel and the bumper and the street below us as we are moving. The funnel takes over the car, and I am amazed that we are still on the ground, but we are. But now I'm wondering why we don't just stop the car, since obviously the car is moving in the same direction. If we just stopped, the tornado would just keep moving away from us in the same forward direction and we'd be fine. However, I do not voice this. Instead, we keep going. 
the next thing I know, the car has been pulled into the funnel and we are now pointed skyward and I fall back towards the rear of the car and feel several G's. Fortunately, the rear hatch door has closed so that I don't fall out. I'm grateful that it was closed or I would have fallen out. But then I think it might have been better for me to have left the car early while it was still on the ground because now I am with the car and we are up in the sky really high and I'm worried that when the tornado is done with us we will fall thousands of feet to our deaths. But then I think that at least if that is the case death will most likely be instantaneous and therefore painless. I think about how to prepare myself in the case that it is possible to survive. I do think there is still a possibility that we will survive however slim and I realize that my head is sort of propped up against the rear wheel well of the car and it wouldn't be a good place to land. That is, I'd probably break my neck upon impact. So I reorient myself in this back area of the Subaru, Subaru so that I'm lying flat and my hands and arms are pushed up against the sides so that in the remote possibility that we land on the wheels, maybe in a soft or wet field, I'll be okay. And I'm looking out the window and I can see everything far down below us. And I think about the fact that if we do die, well this is repeat, it's the same thing, probably will be instantaneous, there won't be any pain. And I don't really think or dwell on it, but just in describing the dream now, I realize, again I don't think about it at the time in the dream, but in describing the dream now, when we were up in the clouds, it is very bright there, kind of hazy bright. And the next thing I know, I am looking out the window and we are very close to the ground and I'm grateful. And it's a soft, muddy farm field and it looks like we're actually going to land slowly and safely. And now the scene shifts again and now I'm standing out where we landed. And there are a bunch of people walking around and it's actually a college campus and I think to myself that it makes sense that we're fine because this is the movies after all. That is, in the dream, I'm thinking that, that this is some kind of Hollywood story, so it makes sense that it would have such a happy resolution that we landed safely. Uh, and right at this point, I didn't have it in the text, but I think you guys heard me. I'm looking around. I see the College uh, Dartmouth campus. It doesn't actually look in the dream like it does in real life, but up on the hill, there's this beautiful old um, colonial building, uh, brick and a white steeple, and it's reflecting the sun, the late day sunlight. It looks quite beautiful. And I look around, uh, 13 here, I look around and realize that I am on the campus of Dartmouth and that I recognize this place. And I'm, again, grateful, seems to be a theme running through it, that I have been here before. Because if I had not been, I wouldn't have the slightest clue where I am. And there are a lot of students walking by me, and some of them don't really appear to really care about me. In other words, there's a guy who's dressed in typical preppy uniform with his girl and they just walk right past in front of me and I have to move out of the way to make room for them and they make no effort to alter their own course and it slightly irritates me. But also, just a little bit earlier in this scene, just after we landed, I saw another guy who's off in the distance and he's kind of yelling something. And I thought he was yelling something at my people in the Subaru or at me because from this distance it looked like he was looking at me or them. And so I start walking towards him and it's when I walk towards him that I have to sort of walk around these other people that I had talked about and they don't really seem to, well I have to dodge them, they won't dodge me. And when I get closer to this guy whom I thought was yelling or addressing me or my people from a distance, I realize that he was not looking at me or my Subaru friends he is and had been looking at or talking to someone else. So I turn around and start walking the other way, a little bit embarrassed and hoping that he didn't think that I was walking towards him, thinking that I was being addressed. As I walk away, I'm looking in the opposite direction and my Subaru friends are taking off, driving off the green and back onto the campus road. And it's a white Subaru and it surprises me because I had not thought that it was that color or model, it was a newer version and they drive off without me. And I think maybe it's actually at this point that I'm thinking that it's good that I know where I am, having been here before, so I have some orientation. Otherwise, I would be clueless as to where I am or lost. And I'm wondering whether my friends are going to remember to look in the back of the car and check and see that I'm still with them and find that I'm not there and come back for me. 
or not. Please add the part <clears throat> uh, 13. Go ahead. Well, I did, but um, so at this, at this point where I'm looking around and recognizing where I am, I see um, a beautiful old colonial uh, building, typical college style building, but it's up on a big grassy hill right at the top all by itself and there's late afternoon sunlight reflecting off it and it's quite stately and gorgeous in the distance. What's Beautiful. It, what's it like? Stately and gorgeous. I don't know what those words Beautiful. mean. Beautiful. Go ahead. It's, it's, uh, it ha it uh, has a sense of, of uh, grandeur. Doesn't help. Um, what does it do to you? Yeah, what does it do? Um, <clears throat> not much, actually. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't change how I function in the dream, but, uh, and it's odd that I didn't even put it in the transcript here. That's okay. That's um, okay. Um, <clears throat> it, um, uh, what did you mean? Uh, she, um, It's it's very brief, but uh, that's okay. But in um, the, in the dream, I um, yeah. Would you compare it with ten? Right. They're both uh, the high points of beauty in the dream. Um, Go ahead. You know, it's almost like I see them, but I'm ignoring them. I'm not letting it affect me. I like that. Say it again. I see it. I see it, but I ignore it, it with both of them. I see it. But I don't let it take me there. I don't, I don't dwell on it. I, I quickly focus on other things. Uh, why is 10 important for the whole dream? Are, are, you, are you asking how would the dream be different like how would things have turned out differently if 10 were not there? Or how would my way of operating have changed without 10? I have an 10? easier question. <clears throat> how does your view that you experience at 10 relate to the whole dream? An answer came to my mind, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> um, um, we can ignore it. No, uh, it, um, I want to. I want to say that it. Um, it unifies the dream, and it makes uh, it it, uh, it makes everything else. It puts everything else in context, uh, like um, everything's going to be all right. Say, so, in terms of your experience in the first part with the Saburo, right? <coughs> yeah. Um, right. Well, uh, I would not have been able to see the bright light up there if I hadn't been pulled but up. But do you mention it? Do you talk about it? Do I talk about what? 
Do you talk about that experience with those people around you? No. Oh. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I spent some time looking over this dream and I came to the conclusion that I'm doing a lot of seeing, but I'm not, I'm not speaking or acting when it comes right. to dealing with yeah. others. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of the things that you're <coughs> focusing on in comparison with what you are, with what you are experiencing? Um, I'm not focusing on the beauty, I'm focusing on some, it's hard to, it's hard to say that being 10,000 feet up in a Subaru in a, in a tornado, a tornado is a smaller thing, but it's, it's like I'm dealing with smaller things, I'm focusing on smaller issues. Um, Therefore I can ask you, what is that, what is it like being in this state? Come on. Um, it's, it's, it's like having blinders on or, um, okay, go ahead. Uh, if, n focusing down narrowly, like just sort of ignoring everything peripherally and just getting, um, well, what it, it's it like, you? <clears throat> it pulls me out of beauty. What, what else? What's it, pleasant, unpleasant? Unpleasant. Hmm? It is unpleasant. In what way unpleasant? Um, worry. I'm in a state of worry. Pardon me? Always worrying. That's right. That's what it does. I agree. That's right. <laughs> Yep. Okay, you got it? Yep. Got this stage? The... This stage? Yep, 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 yep. This yep. stage? Yep, yep, Where yep. does it go? <laughs> Same scene we did last week. <laughs> the doghouse with my two friends. Come on. Perfectly good to go back to the past scene, any when you want. Mm. That means we're, there's so something more to scene. be seen, that's all. Well, you know, what's interesting is, that, as I told you, this dream actually came a couple days before the dream we did last week. Oh, this came before? Yes. So it oh. could, it just, well, I told you that ahead of time. That's but you, true. Yeah. So it may be just telling me the same thing or, you know, right? Um, and, um, you know, we came to the conclusion last because week. Because, who is this? Um, both parents. Both in parents. that scene? Yeah. I mean, Without well, in my mom, in the scene, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, she, she can't deal with uh, joy and bliss. And, oh. Right. But neither can my father. Um, uh, so, you're having remarkable experiences. Yeah. Historic. Yeah. And... Right? And you land at Dartmouth from the campus. You don't tell anybody. No one is interested. I'm worried about how people are watching. And you're worried me. about other people you calling you. Yeah. You're looking the other way. Yep. That's it. <laughs> All right. Hey, sir. Jeff, sir, yes. how did this week go? Oh, how did this week go? Um, after last week's? Yeah. Eldar! Yes. Just for a moment, Jeff. So, just briefly, what was the crux of the scene last week? Not, not the whole scene, but what was the, the, the logo you put on? Uh, that, um, I was in a doghouse with two of my female friends, and we were playing doctor. 
and uh, my mom walked by. And she saw us, turned her head, and then kept walking. So they gave me a ton of questions, a ton of puzzling um, and worry, and it pulled me out of. So her state of mind and my state of mind are what we, we look at. And um, uh, um, it ended up giving me so many questions and so many worries that it pulled me out of the fun that I was having at the time with these girls that were my friends. And I carried that into life with me, just worry, worry, worry all the time. Yeah, it does basically neither of my parents could do with voice. That, that, that makes sense. It looks like, you know, not only each scene, but the logos of each scene reflects the same thing, that you keep getting set up for a confrontation that never happens. Yeah, it's, it's needless worry. It, it, it's, it's, uh, That's uh, a good point. Yeah. I wonder why somebody doesn't do something rather than why something happens. Why? And, you know, the, the tornado doesn't work. And, uh, and uh, the guy shouting at you doesn't happen. And, uh, and then you wonder again, why, uh, why dwell on it? And that seems to be a way out. You don't dwell on it. Seems to be a way out. I don't dwell on it. I'm not on it. Well, no, that's just, that's how you not, you don't, you don't deal with it. That's another way of not dealing with the confrontation. Like that's a, and I really think, like, and I don't really think or dwell on it. It just, it just repeats itself. And I, I, I can't understand why we didn't do this. I'm wondering why that didn't happen. It's, it's right. all confrontations that didn't get fulfilled. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share. Good, thank you. <coughs> Ready, please. Ready. Some guy is showing me his cars. I think my dad is with me. I came to this guy's house with the intention of seeing his cars. I may have seen one or two of them as we were walking in. There are four children as we walk in. Then he comes out and he's like, hey, he looks, like, he looks a little Middle Eastern. He has a bit of a Gary V vibe. As we're talking, he's walking us outside. Some of his kids are following as well. Outside there are three or four of his cars. Outside are three or four of his cars and they're moving slowly out of the garage. As if they're being remotely controlled. I think one of the kids says to me that here comes the Mercedes. I think he gets one of his kids to take pictures. One of them is posing for the pictures. Uh, with the car in the background, with the cars in the background. I'm kind of wondering where the BMW is. <laughs> then we're walking down the driveway. Then we end up in this hotel foyer. I look at the kids and I'm like, where is it? And they're like, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, the BMW is long gone. There's actually this car elevator system in this hotel. So when they're saying that the car is gone, um, what, what they mean is that it went into the elevator and was taken to its designated location. Now I'm talking to Gary V. He's the guy from earlier, but now he's turned into Gary. We're walking to sit down and then we're at, the, at his computer. He says, Oh, I hate it when they charge you extra for something. When he bought his car, he wanted to have these silver rims added. And as we look at the computer, it says that it's $790 for that extra feature. He's like, don't you hate it when it ends up costing much more than it's worth? I kind of think about it and I go, hmm, yeah, that would be... <coughs> That would be cheaper at the mechanic. It would probably be at least $100 cheaper. And he's like, $120. Uh, then it's like one of those kind of conversations like he has on his show. He's a famous guy, by the way, and he has a type of show that, where he has conversations. Um, 
I say something to him like I was under quite I say something to him like I was under for quite a while he smiles but now I'm back he smiles knowingly I was underground for a while but now I'm back now I'm ready to rise again I think I said I needed to be closed off for a while like it was necessary to do that he kind of smiles I'm kind of waiting for him to agree or expecting him to agree. Uh, Gary brings up bee pollen. It looks like it looks like he's surprised that I know about it. I'm like, yeah, I eat that stuff all the time. I love it. He's a little surprised and he's saying that it doesn't work for him. Trying to make sure we're talking about the same one, he's describing what the label looks like. It's black and white on one side and blah, blah, blah. I'm agreeing kind of dismissively, but it's not certain that we're talking about the same product. Anyway, he, he brings me this laptop and puts it in front of me to read. I'm like, what's this? And I realize that it's an article about bee honey. I say, do you know that I'm like a honey pro? <laughs> and I really love bees a lot. Then I move the laptop into a better position and I sit up straight as I'm about to read. Then I'm being woken up by Tank in my studio, the sweet little guy. Mm. I'm very happy and appreciative of him. He's on my bed and he's kind of nudging my hand and tugging at the sheets. I'm thinking it's so nice that he's waking me up and I wonder if it's exactly at the right time too. I think he's kind of saving me from oversleeping. I'm trying to pet him, but because I'm still half asleep. Still half asleep, so I'm trying to pet him. Uh, I feel I'm still so asleep that I feel paralyzed and unable to get up. Tank is so cute. Then it changes, and I look up, and there's this green alien-looking man running to my kitchen. It's a bit scary, but I make an effort to get up and take a look. Because I want to be brave, and I'm thinking it's probably just a dream. I'm really trying to get up with all my might. But I'm so half asleep that I can't control my body. I'm focusing all my mental ability and bringing together my motivation to do this, to get up. But it's just so hard. There's like an immense wall or chain of tiredness that's numbing everything. It's creating a disconnect between my will and my body. And then I can't remember if I actually got up or not. Okay. What do you make of the dream? There's a lot going on. Yeah, I, anything um, curious about it? Um, well, I, I find it strange that I'm involved with these cars and looking at cars, it's kind of... Yeah. Uh, it's not really something I'm interested in. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the cars. Yeah. What did you discover about the issue with the cars? <laughs> I don't get to see the car that I want to see. Which is the MB, most of it. 
right? BMW, yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to see it. The guy said it's long gone. What does that suggest? Um, well, he was saying that uh, just it, we just missed it. We just missed it. It's not actually long gone. It's he was kind of exaggerating. Just missed it. Yeah. What was the fault? Mm. How'd you miss it? Well, it's like it's this automated system where the cars drive themselves into this elevator and it takes them away. Yeah. So we, I think we were just late. You were late. Yeah. With your father. Uh, I don't know. First sentence. Yeah, he, he's with me there, but I don't think he's with me later uh, when we're at the Well, cars. in some way, you missed. So therefore, yeah. what was it like? Come on. You missed what you wanted. Yeah. What that do to you? And that dream. I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I was, uh, yeah, what's that like? <clears throat> Come on. A little bit what? Yeah, a little bit a little bit sad. Mm. Hey. I missed um, out. The episode with the computer and the money, how much it costs. What's the issue there? He's complaining about how much money it costs and you come back and say? Well, I think the issue is that he's rich. He shouldn't care about uh, the, these little numbers. So I think the issue is that I don't tell him that's right that he's rich <laughs> that's right i don't point out the absurdity i just like i play along with this this like the, the car being late you don't say anything just sad and disappointed yeah well, if that's true right look at six What do you see? Giving a profile <clears throat> of yourself, up and down, yes or no? I'm giving one? I don't know, read it. Yeah, I'm... Uh, what? I'm telling him what, what I'm going through. Is there something else? And? Come on. Well, he doesn't. Mm. Well, you. What is it you? What What are you describing in six? Oh, I'm describing my my growth. My my growth. Uh, where I'm at in my up and down development. Huh? Uh, it It was down, but now it's going up. Okay. It's, it's, Look here. See. It's very high. It's higher now. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. What are the bees? What's it like in the bees? Hmm. And are you telling somebody? Okay. Come on. Picture you having yourself as a pro B man, right? Yeah. What's it like? Um, 
That's that's nice. <coughs> What's it like as a pro bee man? It's good. I, I love bees and honey. How good? Uh, Pleasant? It's very good. Hmm? It's very good. Very good. Very good. It's Tank. Good. And what state are you in? In both eight and nine. Well, eight is, um, there's a very nice, very high state of mind with tank, but there's also the paralyzed. Um, high and? And low. And low, come on. Yeah. And nine? Nine is just low. That is very low. Yeah. Right? Yeah, nine is the lowest in the dream. Right. What's going on? Look at this, see? What's going on? Right? You have a certain experience, but you don't share it. You don't share this. You're sharing bees. Right? You're talking. Yeah. Right? But not about yourself. Is that correct? Um, I talk about myself a little bit, but there was much more that I could have talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's something that I'm really passionate about and that I really... Um, that I really love. <coughs> so it's kind of strange that I'm letting him show me some article on bees. What? <laughs> when, um, okay, come on. Yeah. I, I, it seems like the the last um, state of mind in number nine yeah. actually runs through the whole dream. That's right. In in lesser That's right. in, Good le for you. in lesser. Right. What's it like? There's like an immense wall or chain of tiredness that's numbing everything. Right. There's a certain kind of. Come on. It's a really strong, like, tiredness, paralysis. Uh, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm all there with my mind. My mind is completely there, but um, there's some kind of, like, like a poison or like a... But the body? Like a numbing. Body numb. Yeah. Right? There's, a, there's, a, there's like a blanket, like a cloud of... Um, yeah, it's like a blanket. Uh, of... Right, right. Hey, uh, what are we talking about in your past? There it is. There it is. A blanket. It... The blanket thing makes me think mm -hmm. of um, when I... There's a kind of a strong paralysis. It's a, the mind is there, but the body is dumb, uh, numbed, right? It's like, like there's a blanket over the whole thing, right? Where does that go? I think it goes to 
when my parents were sending me to Islamic school mm. and I never I almost never wanted to go uh -huh. and the only way that I found out to get out of it was to pretend that I'm sleeping right and that's when they would uh, let me off the hook that's right and um, like I would hear their conversation it's it was it was my mom telling my dad I oh, just let him just let him sleep he's sleeping just let him sleep okay and okay. Um, what do you think of what's going on Given what you're saying? Well, it's like... Oh, yeah, yeah. They showed that they were really interested in you in going to the Islamic school. No. What? It's more like they wanted to teach me that... It's like they're, they're supporting this act or well, this, this supporting sleeping. Mm. Not, not good enough. More. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'll, I'll help you, okay? Because yeah. I'm good at this. This is a very, very precarious mental state. Many people suffer enormously. Mm. Many people jump off bridges. What? And your family saw you were in that desperate state. Because, after all, you were sleeping, pretending to sleep. Yeah. And that allowed your mother to tell your father you can't go to Islamic school, which they really wanted you to go. What? What? What's going on? I'm just wondering whether they probably maybe did know that I was awake. <laughs> Barbara, did you hear that? I heard that. I'm shocked. <laughs> shocked, they tell you. <laughs> what's going on? What are you what's going on here? <laughs> First of all, I agree with your mother. I mean she did probably didn't see you were pretending to sleep. Because that's such a desperate condition, being asleep, that no one can wake you up to go to school. Islamic well, school at that. Well, what? Maybe they could wake him up. It's like, uh, it's like sleeping has like a holy status in our family. Do you want to convince me that she knew you were not pretending? I can't. I can't convince you that of that. Because it's... I mean, even the fact that I heard her say that is suspect. Because, like, maybe I think maybe she wanted me to hear that. I th yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What's going on? I think I'm being conned into... You found a way to get out of something I didn't want. Mm. Just get in that state. Is that this state? Yeah, it is. I'm fully alert and fully awake, but there's a blanket. <laughs> there's actually, literally, a blanket. Um, as well as mentally, there's a blanket. Yeah, it's that same state. It's the same state. Yeah. Yeah, what does that mean? I don't know. They want me to be under the blanket. You're, you look like you're continuing uh, a real or a phony state, which? Uh, I was pretending. Yeah, yeah. you're pretending. Right. And 
it's like they were applauding me for yeah. pretending. Yeah, yeah, they're letting you get away with it. Because they really wanted you to go to Islamic school. I mean, that was really, really, really you know, it's easy to see. This is apparently higher than mm. Islamic school. This lesson. So you believe them. Wow. You believe them. Therefore, pretending to be in that state gets get you out of a lot of things. Yeah, it does. Mm. I, yeah. I do that to myself. Yeah. With the things that I. Yeah. Is it time to want quit? to do. Yeah, it yeah, is. All right. <laughs> 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 This was actually yesterday, not the 5-3. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm in South Orange County with my dad. Maybe Dana Point or something, but it's not the real city. Like, in the, in the dream, it's South Orange County, but I don't know if it was, really was Dana Point, which funny ended up in my real job. I ended up in Dana Point that very day, which I had no idea. Okay, so we're walking along... And we get to this hill, and we start going down it. It's a pretty steep hill. As we're going along, I tell, I tell him, my dad, Wow, this is a pretty steep hill. This would be awesome to ride my bike down. You could fly down this sucker. And he says, Yep, you certainly can. Either he or I say the only problem or issue is it's going to suck to walk back up or ride back up or whatever. And in the dream, too, I realized that my bike has a really uh, a low gear to make it considerably easier to go back uphill. And I, and I realized that. that it stole it, but it's probably like a three-mile hill, so it's going to be a while. Okay, so uh, we keep going down, and it's pretty steep for a while. And then it gradually, it's not as steep towards the end. As we get down... As we get down there, I think I'm on a skateboard towards the bottom because I'm moving way faster. And actually, so I'm not really on a skateboard. It's kind of like a, a, maybe a long skateboard. As, I'm, as I got here, I realized I'm more like sitting down on it. I'm not standing up. Um, okay, skateboard towards the bottom because I'm moving way faster. As we get towards PCH... There's one issue. I'm going so fast, it's going to be hard to stop, and there is traffic. But I get lucky, and the light is red in my favor. And I also realize in the dream that, uh, that I could ditch. You know, like if, if it's really going to be a bad situation, I could just roll off this thing and scrape myself up. But it's considerably better than ending up in fast moving traffic on PCH. Okay, so, uh, right, there's, it's going to be hard to stop, and there's traffic, but I get lucky. The light is red in my favor. I kind of stop, and I follow the same path as him, but he'd been on foot and didn't have any issue with potential stopping. We both go into the street and hook around the stopped cars as where I actually go around the very last one to make sure, in case the light turns green, that I'm not going to get hit. So he actually kind of went into the tr out on the street and hooks around and just walks in between a few cars, but I took a more cautious approach. Uh, we get back to the curb, and there's a Carl's Jr., and as we're about to start going back up the hill, but he goes into the restaurant, I think to use the restroom, and he's got my hound, Allie, with him. And I'm like, hey, Pop, you can't take the dog in there. And he's like, oh... And he hands me the dog, and I tell him I'm going to start this walk. And I th think that I had the thought that I should perhaps wait for him. Good. Good. <clears throat> what do you make of the dream? Where would you start to look? Hmm. I, maybe where I'm on like this skateboard kind of thing. That's like a big transition. Mm -hmm. Or because it's a... Uh, 
I mean, the only issue I was seeing is really like there's the, the two issues that I that are raised in the dream. Right, going back up this hill is going to suck, but it's totally doable. Okay. And um, so what then there's you? traffic, which like the yeah. stop, which I even have, which isn't going to be an issue because the lights in my favor, and I also mm -hmm. realize I could ditch if I have to. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to probably get scraped up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, by the way, could you read that line where, but he's on foot? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm going so fast it'll be hard to stop. There's traffic, but I get lucky the light is red in my favor. I kind of stop and I follow the same path as him. But he'd been on foot and didn't have any... What's it like at that moment when you see he's on foot? As you know, that's, I'm not sure if it's in the dream or not, but it's kind of weird that we're at the same spot. He'd been on foot, and he's an old guy, and how are we going the same speed at all? Like, I should have passed him, but... Uh... What's it like you're on the skateboard, right, doing all these things? You see he's on foot. What does that do to you in the dream? I don't think much of it. Pardon? I didn't think much of it. What do you think of it now? Well, yeah, right now it's rather odd. Like, yeah. hey, if I'm on this racing fast thing yeah. and he's on foot, it doesn't add up. Uh, and in the beginning, does it look like you're together? Yeah. But and now? We're together again. Except there's no real... Well, actually, so there's a part where I'm on that board where we're, we're well, kind of not together. And what's now, going on in the dream, then? I have no idea. Come on. <laughs> if this is true... I, he passed me or he caught up or... Well, he's in front of me, so... But don't you continue? What do you mean? On the skateboard? Well, so basically... The, the traffic's there, and he walks out and makes this hook around it, which makes no sense either. Why, That's if you're right. on foot, why would you even do that? Yeah. He doesn't have any issue stopping, so yeah. right now, that's kind of strange. Yeah. Like, so why I'm would a, you walk on We want to know, what is he doing? And you have to tell me in the dream, looking at him, and you say, huh? Okay, well, so it's more clear to me with the dog part. Like, what are you doing? Taking the, the dog, dog yeah. into, you don't take the dog into a restaurant or... Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. And then like, you uh, go walk, go off on your own. Yeah, I start to. I know it's called a very tight relationship between you and your father. Oh, no, we didn't ever. No? Have, he and I never had a really tight relationship. Then what is he doing in this relationship with you? If that was Harry instead of your father, what would you say to Harry? I might have been, what are you doing, idiot? You're, you're behaving rather weird. Yeah, but you don't... I don't say anything to him. What do you think of that? You don't say anything when you see that he's acting out something weird. Right, look her. There he goes. And you see him. And you're silent. Yeah, actually, the part going in the road, there's not even the... There's not even really a thought of, that's weird. It's only the dog part is where it comes like, what are you doing? That's right. And actually, going into the street is considerably more weird than taking your dog with you. Yeah, it's just Carl Jr. with a dog. No, I was saying going into traffic on foot is oh, okay. stranger. Right. Than yeah. having the dog with you. Yeah, okay. Which I'd say absolutely I mean, nothing. There's a whole about. bunch of things here that are weird. Yeah, there's a bunch of weird things. Like I'm walking down a hill and now I'm suddenly on a skateboard ish kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of weird things. Yeah, in the and you're not saying anything. No, not mm -hmm. at all. What do you make of that? Well, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> See, the question is, if it was someone other than your father, what would you have done? 
that's you know that's the weird thing too, because usually with my old man, I'd let him have it. Yeah. I would lay into him. Yeah. But now, say, but since it's your father. But in this dream, my pops and I are more like buddies in in the dream, as we're. I like that. We Look here. We never really Come were on. that way. Let me ask this: What kind of buddy is he? He's like my dad that I actually get along with in this dream. All right, give him a couple of stars. How good is he as a, a kind of buddy? <laughs> well, actually, or how I feel in the dream. In the dream. Well, I'm saying he's, he's a weird buddy, so... He seems like a real buddy. Well, no, they're saying in the dream, he seems like we're, you know, we have a good relationship. Yeah. Like we're right. getting along okay, really see? well. It seems like a good relationship, but when you examine it, it's very odd. Like, yeah. So it looks like there's a war going on between your feelings about the gentleman. Yeah. And the story itself. They're at odds, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Oh no, that yeah. that's that's definitely going on in yeah. my life yeah. of uh, yeah. how yeah. I feel about people versus hey, this is what's really happening and see you later. That's right. Like this is not in my interest. So, in, come uh, on, would you not split. say then the problem is with this, the way it seems, is the problem? Yeah. Where are Where they, you experiencing that? Oh, all over. Yeah, a lot of my job and a couple of personal relate. Like, I've said a few things, but it's I need to really like say more, act more, and you do gotta, it, and just yeah. say hey, just because I like you. This is really not personal. Or That's hell, right. I could even make some crap up and just get my else say bye. Yeah. <laughs> Time to go. So, what image are you going to have of yourself? You decide to say it. What happens if you decide to, to be forthright? Come on. What image are you going to have? Uh, hey, maybe I'm like nervous of upsetting people or something. Pardon me? I see. Maybe I'm like uh, worried about upsetting people or. That's and funny. it might. Right. And I really probably shouldn't care about yeah. that anyway. And yeah, so, but see, there it is. I'm worried about upsetting people. These kinds of people. How many are like him that you know of? Well, so that's that are the, weird. Oh, all kinds of people, sure. All yeah, kinds. It's, it's these kinds of people. Right. Well, so that's the strange thing. My dad, yeah, he could have not done the, he's, this is like him 20 years ago or something, yeah. you know, and. That's a warning. Yeah. Time to. Uh, uh, it reminds me of one of the last dreams I did and it wasn't entirely clear to me and this just was a lot more <laughs> <laughs> right there. So, you know what you got to do. Yeah. All right. There it is. <laughs>